So not every photon that is absorbed causes fluorescence. So we normally talk about a quantum yield of fluorescence. And we normally give it the symbol phi and uh, F for fluorescence. And it is, if you like, the number of fluorescence photons that come out of the molecule uh, divided by the number of absorbed photons that go in. So it's just simply a fraction between 0 and 1, or presumably it has to be between 0 and 1. And uh, 0 just means that no fluorescence photons come out, and 1 means that every single absorbed photon causes fluorescence. In terms of our kinetic model, we can show that this ratio must be equal to the ratio of rate constants. So it's the ratio of the fluorescence rate constant divided by the ratio, or sorry, the sum of all the rate constants that cause deactivation from that excited state. So we've got fluorescence, we've got uh, inter-system crossing over to a triplet state, and we've got internal conversion either to an excited vibrational state or back to the grand S0 state. And I've introduced a, a new um, thing down here, a new subscript here. This is a zero, and uh, what the zero means is that this is in the absence of a quencher. So it's in the absence of a quencher, which we're going to use the symbol Q for. And a quencher is just something that can react with the excited state. And when it reacts with the excited state, it deactivates it and prevents it from releasing a fluorescence photon. So I'll just put the little zero there, but we'll, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Now you might recognize the denominator of this expression. So 1 over KF plus K intersystem crossing plus KIC and earlier we called this tau, so we can rewrite this expression as kf times by tau. And actually I'm going to write that tau zero, so tau is this lifetime of the excited state. It's a measure of how long it takes before 1 over e of it decays away. So um, tau sub zero, the zero again is telling us that it's in the absence of a quencher. So if we're interested in the rate constant for fluorescence, then we can actually go ahead and just ratio the fluorescence quantum yield by the time constant in the absence of the quencher. So uh, Kf is the uh, fluorescence yield over tau zero. So we can determine the rate constant from fluorescence from uh, experimental data. So for instance, if we take some aqueous tryptophan and we measure the uh, quantum yield, the fluorescence quantum yield, in the absence of a quencher, it is about 0.2. So that tells us that only about 1 in 5 absorbed photons are causing fluorescence for tryptophan in water. And I've just noticed that I've left the R out on tryptophan. And uh, it also has a lifetime in the absence of a quencher of 2.6 nanoseconds. So within 2.6 nanoseconds, uh, 1 over E of the excited state is remaining. And so that gives us enough information to find Kf. So Kf is the ratio of the quantum yield by the lifetime, and uh, we've got those. The quantum yield is just a number, and the lifetime, though, has units. So it's nanoseconds times 10 to the minus 9 of a second, and that's going to give us something with reciprocal seconds for its units. That's the units we'd expect for a first order rate constant. And to a couple of significant figures, we get that 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 7. So fluorescence is a pretty fast process. Within a few nanoseconds, the majority of the excited state is decayed away. Sometimes instead of given lifetime data, we're given half-life data. So for instance, maybe we've got a quantum yield of 0.35 and maybe we've got a half time for the excited state of uh, 5.6 nanoseconds. So in every 5.6 nanoseconds, half of that excited state decays away, or rather the fluorescence, right, half of it is gone in 5.6 nanoseconds. We can use this to find our first order rate constant. And again, if you have first order kinetics, your half-life is equal to the natural log of two over your rate constant. And so that's the natural log of 2 over 1 over the lifetime. So the lifetime then times by the natural log of 2 is our half-life. So if we want to tag sub 0, then it's our half-life over natural log of 2. So that is 5.6 nanoseconds over the log of 2. And uh, I get that to be 8.08 .08 nanoseconds. So we probably can't go past that first decimal place there. And so just like before, we can calculate the fluorescence rate constant by just dividing our quantum yield by our lifetime. 
and uh, again nanoseconds 10 to the minus 9 of a second so uh, this is going to be quite a large number here and I get 4.3 times 10 to the 7 uh, reciprocal seconds for our rate constant